It has been a day of confusion as to whether the All Progressives Congress has a consensus presidential candidate will analyze the developments in the last 24 hours as the ruling party holds its national convention. The APC Northern governors have backed a sudden presidential candidacy for the party. What are the chances of this becoming a reality? And don't forget, we also will be looking through the, today's national uh, newspapers, uh, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Very good morning to you. We're back with uh, The Breakfast Live on Plus TV Africa, live from our studios on Victoria and Lagos and broadcasting around the world on the DSTV and Star Times platforms. My name is Kofi Bartels. I am Messi Ibopo. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Tuesday morning. All right. Uh, flurry of activities as far as the All Progressives Congress is concerned in Abuja, uh, where, of course, um, we were told that some civil servants could not access their offices because of uh, the blockade by security operatives. Uh, for those who had offices close to um, the, the APC National Convention venue, I mean, the party is so big, it had to take two days to have the National Convention. Um, and of course, I'm sure today's activities will spill over into, into the next day, into tomorrow. But look at that on the program as we go on. <laughs> uh, very interesting. It's a really big, big, big day. Big, mm. if you know what I mean, for, it, the, for the All Progressives Congress. Very big day. Yes, I, I, I also saw a lot of persons tweeting and making some comical comment about whether, you know, the, the, the Electoral Act talks about having... Um, you know, the convention at night because mm. he was going to sleep. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> when... Are people when... looking for trouble? <laughs> you asked them if they're looking for trouble. Well, we start yeah. off the conversation with a top trending. As always, uh, we tell you or we'll bring you up to speed what's making the rounds, generating different reactions in different spaces across. Now, uh, looking at the... On the list this morning, it's Banky W winning the PDP rerun, a uh, popular musician, if you want to see, or a singer. Uh, he's mm. won that rerun election with 24 votes. And let's not forget the controversy that surrounded all of that. We could see him uh, taking to his social media to express gratitude and thank everyone that supported him, uh, you know, all through the pattern, being very, very grateful and also acknowledging his opponent in it. He also talked about, now one of the things that stood out for me is the fact that he talked about the legislative agenda, uh, which will be a collaboration between all of the stakeholders and communities. That's what Banky W said. But tongues are wagging. Some people are saying, what exactly is it going to do, you know, eventually if he gets the win? Because right now, this is the primary levels. There's one at the primary level, he's one uh, in the PDP does he stand a chance of winning, you know, the APC right here in Lagos? We're talking about the Etiosa, uh, you know, constituency. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, uh, congratulations to Banky W. I mean, it's, uh, it's a well-won victory. Um, he's proved the doubters wrong. You know, Banky has been singing. And this time he's going into music. <laughs> You know, and of course, um, we're asking ourselves a question, whether he, we're going to have a Lagos, he will have a Lagos party, you know, at the end of uh, the, uh, the People's Democratic Party um, uh, primaries that held on a Sunday. You know, he sang a song, he says there's no party like the <laughs> Lagos, Lagos party. party so right? we thought, we're asking whether he was going to have uh, a Lagos party. And then we saw the victory, the, you know, videos came out on social media on the Monday uh, of them counting his votes. But then the PDP did him strong thing. Exactly. You know, he sang a song saying, they do me strong thing, you know. So the PDP did him strong thing where another result sheet was sent to the national of the body of the PDP um, and his opponent had more votes than him, you know. And so, of course, when PDP did him strong thing, we're like as asking if Banky was going to take it lying down, if that was the end of his... Um, his aspirations. But I think the goodwill that he enjoys around the country, not just in Etiosa, but all over the Lagos state, um, must have persuaded the party to, to, to do the unthinkable, which was to say, okay, we are ordering a rerun mm -hmm. of that primary. And then um, when the primary run held, he showed them that he's capable. You know, he's called mm -hmm. Mr. Capable. <laughs> and he signed this what I'm capable of. So it, Bank has just been dishing, you know, his tunes, you know, in, through his actions uh, at the uh, Etiosa. PDP primaries. But um, uh, some people are sad. You know, some would have hoped that he would have faced um, Babajide Obanikoro, who is the son of uh, Mr. Leo Obanikoro, former minister of, uh, of defense. 
Um, unfortunately, um, the young Obanikuru lost the APC presidential um, uh, Atiosa uh, federal constituency primaries to um, one of the Ilegushi's uh, uh, son, uh -huh, or by Ilegushi's son of Vikate, you know, the popular Ilegushi family. So whilst uh, it won't be uh, uh, Banky W versus um, Obariko Ropa 2, they have a finished business from the last election, um, Banky still has his work cut out against a popular, or uh, the Sion, or a, a, a son of, the, of a popular Lagos family. Uh, it remains to be seen if the PDP can, for once, win a seat on election in Lagos State. Let's see. Has the PDP ever won? They've never won in Lagos State. Well, you know, fingers it, crossed. Yes. It, it, so, feels, so, it feels like, you know, 2023 know. might just be different, just like you have mentioned mm -hmm. uh, in the course of our conversation. You talked about the fact that... Mm -hmm. uh, Banky W yeah. is enjoying a lot of goodwill, if you look at it, even within the party. I mean, one mm -hmm. would look at his opponent, uh, you know, is quite strong and all of that. And so, l let's just see. It feels like he has lived in the future with his lyrics. And uh, let's see how all of that I'm telling now. you, Miss <laughs> But I mean, you know, um, one wonders, this is his opponent. Um, uh, one got five votes, you know, five votes. Um, this time, the, 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 the primary took place at the party's uh, sectorate on Alpha Beach, Beach Road in the Tiosa local government area. So it was a neutral. Everybody agreed on that venue. Previously, they had two venues. Um, I mean, 29 votes, Banky won 24. The guy won five. Uh, how come that this man, Simon Iboni, won, won the first one? You know, it was, it was a bit of a confusion, you know, when the, it was clear that the PDB had a parallel um, sort of um, arrangement in the state with the party chairman and the exco saying one thing. And then they, those coming from Abuja say another thing. This time they were able to agree on having everything at one venue. You know, I think that was the problem. So we hope to see, you know, Nigerians have been saying, you know, they hope to see more, more um, entertainers, people who have, uh, you know, Nigeria at heart in the National Assembly or in, in politics, even in Lagos State House of Assembly. But uh, I think you don't want to see them behave like, like, like you know, <laughs> let's not go there. Um, so congratulations to you, Banky W. Um, let's see if you can take this home. Hopefully, wish you uh, all the best. I think I wish him all the best, as we wish him also uh, um, Legushi, uh, all the best as well. Don't forget, Ikate is not far from here, is it? No, it's uh, not. So we have to we wish Legushi all the best as well. All right. Um, another case of uh, uh, sort of um, fake news making the rounds yesterday. Mercy it wasn't. Uh, to palatable for us in the media because I saw the headline breaking news vice VP's car somersaults on Abuja Airport Road. I mean, the paper that put this out the first time online was so sure, they were so sure that um, the, the VP's car has, had not just had an accident, had somersaulted. Mercy, you know, only for Laolu Akonde, who is the spokesman of uh, the vice president, to Put out a statement refuting that um, that, that 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 headline from um, one of the papers. Say no, it's not true that the vice president's uh, car was involved in the convoy. He says on his way to the airport this morning. That was yesterday morning. The vice president came across a road traffic accident, stopped to lend assistance and ensure the victim was taken to the hospital with the VP's convoy ambulance. Uh, he then proceeded on his trip to uh, Ondo State, where he now is heading to the site of uh, yesterday's attack in Owo. Um, so, so it was quite clear. They put up pictures later. You could see the vice president uh, assisting his, uh, his security detail to also assist members of the public to get that, the victim to safety. You know? So um, it, it was, it was, this was okay. Everything ended well. But... I think it, it behoves on the media to also verify the kind of information. Yeah, very important because I, I also remember that at the time that, you know, news broke or story broke, I myself was, you know, in a state of, oh, really, this really happened. I mean, was really worried. Um, no one would expect all of that. And, of course, you also want to be looking at the permutations that will be going around following the fact that you have the APC 
having their convention, all of that. I mean, a lot could just be running through. But it was also good to see that there was a tweet from the vice president Twitter handle where he said, I was not involved in an accident. On my way to the airport, we ran into an accident scene. My security and medical team assisted in removing victims of the crash from the scene, and they have been transported to the Air Force Base Hospital. Very commendable. And this is what we talk about. Even though you have people saying, Oh, it probably is just a time. It's, it's a political period, and so you have all of these gestures. I don't know what it is. I don't know the um, motive behind this, you know, the intention, what it would be. But I think that it's a good gesture, and it's something that's not just limited to the ruling class. A lot of times we have seen, we pass through accident scene, and uh, nobody seemed to, you know, pay attention. You want to remember the story of the Good Samaritan. That's not happening. So that was a gesture of Good Samaritan, uh, not minding the fact that he is the vice president and not necessarily, that's what I'm thinking, it's not necessarily because it's the vice president and also it's a political period. I'm thinking that um, everyone should be looking out for every other person and that's actually what happened. So kudos to the vice president and that was really commendable. I hope that we emulate um, this particular gesture. Mm. All right. Um, w w one, one aspect of this entire uh, story is the fact that um, even as, uh, after the prior vice president had said, oh, this is what I did, you know, I helped someone out and uh, blah, blah, blah. One would have thought that would have been the end. But then people have said, ah, they're acting another drama. You know when these politicians um, will be seen eating corn or will be seen hawking something on the street or pleating hair. <laughs> or going to the market to shop with their wives during election time, you know, or buying a um, puff puff from the puff puffs that are connected, they will take pictures of them. Um, so some people, you know, said, ah, the vice president is acting this out, and um, this is one of those um, calculated um, Nollywood scenes for, now, for them to be presented as humanists, you know. Uh, but a, a, a friend of mine, uh, Adura, Adura Tommy Bolade, uh, he's also a media professional as well, uh, he put out something on Instagram, and I love it. He said, I know Nigerians are angry at the government, but would you have preferred the VP to go his way? He asked. Uh, are we saying that stopping to attend to the accident victim is playing to the gallery? What should he have done? You know, so what, what, what should he have done? And that people are coming out saying the vice president is just acting his script. He mm -hmm. just wants, uh, you know, to present himself as a, uh, a humanist, as a good person so that Nigerians can like him. What should he have done? No, no, that if he went, to, he went his way, so, uh, you know, wicked man. Maybe they wouldn't have even recognized that, he, you know, he was in that convoy or he probably passed. But like I said, uh, we shouldn't politicize everything. And that's a that's very valid question that he's put out. What should he have done? I'm, I'm saying that sometimes it's okay for us to look beyond what's going on. Let's, everything is not about politics. Everything is not about APC and PDP. <laughs> you know, yeah, life, there's more to life than APC and PDP. I mean, that's an accident. Someone it's, stopped by to it, help. It's a big well, life. It's a big... <laughs> So we, we mustn't make yeah. everything about because it feels like you, you cough now, oh, it, it's a political, it's APC. <laughs> you take a movie, it's, come on, <laughs> we have a life before now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So before all of this political, you know, whatever we have, let's understand that we're human beings before yeah. we're any other thing. Yeah. And that's actually a kind gesture. And I commend the vice president for that kind act. Mm. All right, we commend the vice president for that kind act. Keep doing it. Don't mind what people are saying on Twitter. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, it's just a, a few people. Um, if you compare it to the entire country, I think most will appreciate to see something like that. Um, the nation is grieving. People are not happy, you know, and it's understandable. You know, it's understandable. But um, like, like the gentleman I quoted said, well, what should he have done? What should he have done? All right. Um, it's been raining, um, you know, grief in, in our own state since uh, Sunday's attacks. Um, latest uh, figures I saw, over 53 people, uh, bodies uh, counted, dead, deposited, with uh, many injured and uh, in critical, some in critical condition at a hospital in Ondo State. Um, the national leader of the All Progressives uh, Congress was there, uh, in Owo, that's uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as was the vice president who was also there uh, in uh, Owo. Uh, we had, had another uh, APC presidential aspirant, also visiting as well. I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, but um, Tinbu, it, it's been said, uh, donated uh, quite a, a huge amount of money. Uh, this is a, 
according to some reports, 125 million naira in total. Some money went to the victims. Uh, uh, some money went to uh, the the church, the Catholic church in that particular part of um, Ondo State. Now, speaking at the Olowo of Owo's palace, um, uh, the governor of that state uh, described the Pentecost Sunday's attack as a Black Sunday. So he was also part of uh, Mr. Chilibu's entourage. You can see the uh, governor of, uh, of Ondo State, Rotimi Akiri Olu, there. Um, now, Mr. Tinubu said, um, well, this is what the governor said. It's quite interesting, important. He said a group of people, terrorists, came into a very serene area, into a city, and, and committed this horrific crime. It's heart-wrecking. This is unbearable, uh, challenging to us. Like I said, we are determined to go after these criminals. Now, Mr. Tinubu, on his part, said the attackers meant more damage than Governor Kerodulu described. Uh, he assured that he will support the government to find the attackers. And this Otinabu said, God, quote, God in his infinite mercy saved some people. Some people died as a result of this evil act. We pray that they will not die in vain. All right. Uh, Tinubu was not alone. He was accompanied by um, former House of Rep Speaker Yakubu Dogara uh, and former Lagos Deputy Governor Femi Pedro, uh, former head of the EFCC, Nuhur Badu, and others. Uh, Tinubu donated 15 million naira to the families of the victims' mercy of the attack and 25 million naira uh, to the Catholic Church. Uh, this is what um, uh, we hear. Also, the Nigerian Governors Forum donated 15 million naira to the victims of the attack as well. This was um, uh, said or announced when the chairman of the NGF, he's also the Kiddi State Governor, uh, Kaede Faimi, uh, visited the governor of um, Ondo State at Government House. So he made that announcement on behalf of the Governors Forum. Um, some good work works there. But people have been saying, oh, yes, you can donate money, feel free, we welcome it. But this will not affect whether we'll vote for you in 2023 or not. Mm. When, when it comes to voting for you in 2023, uh, we're going to put this donation and this gesture aside. It's a different ball game. Uh, so, uh, people have no joy. <laughs> we have no joy. No one is taking it, mercy. Yeah, at, at all. So it, it feels like, I mean, we're talking about the vice president stopping at an accident scene and uh, helping and so on. The other hand, you also have another kind gesture yeah, yeah, yeah. of visiting the scene and of people are accident. saying, ah, why are you doing because, this? Because, I mean, you know? one would even expect that the president should have visited. In almost all of the, you know, states and places where you have all of this event happening, we've really not seen the president mm -hmm. visiting. When you compare that to other climbs, or you see, mm -hmm. oh, the president will go there, or he will come out and make a speech and all of that. But, but the president has the hardly visited in his time. He normally yes, send, he he's he hardly send visited. Send Yemi Oh well, it, it's not the same thing, <laughs> right? Now, yeah. especially where you have the vice president now, it's not the same thing because a lot of people will be thinking that the vice president is acting in his capacity, especially when he has an interest of becoming the president, and that's the connotation. But the vice so, president rarely moves on his own. Maybe he went on a personal note, I don't know, but he's VP. So, so that's what mm. I'm saying. So at this point, especially, if, if he weren't vying for the office of the president, it would be different. But now that he's vying for the office of the president, it's, it's, it's almost difficult to say whether or not he was acting on the instructions or the order of the president. Mm -hmm. But on the other maybe, hand... Maybe, yeah, maybe all the presidential aspirants <laughs> should have gone there because, no, I mean, uh, Tinubu the other... went there first. Mm. You know, and then uh, it, it's it's commendable of him, and like I would say that we're humans before any other thing, and yes. that's a kind gesture. Yes. But we we want to see this action continue, whether or not you're a political office holder, whether or not you're going to become a flag bearer. Mm -hmm. Let it let it be an action that should continue. Let's see humanity every other time. Credit to the vice president. At times when the president has been away on a medical uh, vacation, the VP has always visited sites. You know, he always does that. Well, um, it, political campaign or not, it's humanity, like Mercy, you've said, and uh, we just have to allow them to do what they have to do and still keep our eyes on the important stuff. Uh, we'll be right back with more right here on Plus TV. The Breakfast returns after this break. We dive into the pages of the National Dailies with analysis of the headlines. <laughs> 